Well, fuck. Normally my weekends are uneventful, but today has been pretty crazy. As you can tell, I drove the Bentley straight in the garage rather than backing it up. I know what you're thinking, Dave, that's wild. Like you gotta slow down and you know, you're 38 now, I'm not getting any younger, take less risks, but I did it. And it's really actually uh, difficult because there's no backup sensors. Well, there's, there's sensors, but there's no camera. So I can't see any of the corners. So I gotta watch here on this and the wall. That's what I got for you so far. Just gonna stop it here. It's been a very long day, and if you're a parent, you'll understand what I mean. I finally got my young one to bed. It's nine o'clock now, and I haven't really filmed anything for you guys. And I was reading some comments from yesterday's video, and there's a few people, I think one or two, and in my mind, that's everybody, uh, to serve my own egotistical needs. Uh, someone was like, you should read some of your screenplay. And uh, I, I will. And I was thinking about it actually after I saw that one comment that validated this entire video. That one person who made me go, everybody wants to see the script. People say that sometimes. They'll be like, start a YouTube channel because everybody's asking me. But it's really just one person. They just want an excuse to do it and not just say because they want to do it. They just. Anyway. Um, so, the backstory 2007, 2008, I'm managing a Starbucks and I'm not very happy. And I have a weird uh, sense of humor, as you probably know. I wanted to uh, write screenplays. I thought I'll just write a screenplay, mail it away, and get fucking rich. Doesn't work that way. That being said, I did buy the actual software, and it's, it's like 200 bucks, which is, it, which is a lot of money even today, but back then it was a lot of money for me, but I really wanted to use the software. It makes it a lot easier. So a software that allows you to write in the proper format so that Hollywood will read it. Um, I did some reading on how to get a script read, and it's very, very specific, like, you have to use these brass pins and this one in the middle you're not supposed to use, only just the top and bottom. If you don't do this right, they won't even read it. They'll see it and they'll throw it to the side because it's like, it has to be exact certain way. And they'll only read the first few pages. You get two or three pages and if they're interested, they'll keep on reading it or pass it on to one of their under people. And anyways, I read some stuff on that. So I went out and bought the actual brass barbs. Now this screenplay is not finished and it's full of mistakes, grammar mistakes, spell mistakes. And some of the jokes didn't age well. So some of the things I will not be reading from this screenplay circa 2000, I would say 2007, maybe 2008. A couple of jokes just wouldn't work today. So I'll omit those from this read. And I'm not going to read the whole thing by any means. I'll read you a few pages. And if you guys enjoy this and you want to see more, then maybe I'll read more. It would actually be funny to do a table read where I get like Damon, Anthony, Mia, whatever, get some, a few people from the DD club and we actually go through and read a whole scene like they do for movies. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd have to edit this out because like I said, this is one of the jokes, sure. Uh, all right, so, Pen Ed, the premise, a young man working at a uh, Pizza Hut, which, was I working at Pizza Hut? No, I was at Starbucks at this time, but I worked at Pizza Hut before that, so I used that as the premise. It's basically about myself. Really depressed that he doesn't have a degree. And he figures if he gets a degree, like an educated degree, like a business degree, whatever you want to call it, that he will get a really good job and be really happy. Um, and that reflects to my mindset at the time where um, people in my family, people, um, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, I have an uncle who's a psychologist or psychiatrist, one of the two, total prick. And he told my dad years ago that I would never be, my sister and I would never be overachievers. And I, my dad didn't tell me that story. My sister overheard, she told me, she goes, you hear, you hear what Uncle David said about us? And um, I remember that got in my head and I don't know why, it just stuck and it made me really hungry and it made me move out and get working and I, I worked at Pizza Hut and Starbucks, I worked my way up, I was managing and I was trying to figure out my way in the world. I didn't have the home life, it wasn't a rough home life, but it wasn't like, it was very Scottish and if you're, if you're Scottish or Irish descent, you'll understand there's no money for school. And my dad was did pretty good, but there was no college fund, there was nothing like you're on your own. I figured it out now. It's your time to figure it out. You're out. So 18, I moved out and I started working on these jobs, but I felt like I was meant to do more and I was just missing um, certain things. Self-confidence is a big one. Uh, I had limiting beliefs based on watching my dad, how he run his small business. So I really didn't know it was possible. It took me until Fuck, I mean, I had a bunch of small businesses along the way, but until probably my mid-30s, until I started feeling, you know, I found my path, which was DDE, which when, when Damon gave me opportunity to work with him, 
that's when I felt like, okay, this is going to make sense. So anyways, I was pretty hard on myself. Like I said, no education, still don't have an education. I do have grade 12. That's it. And um, all these people in my life were basically looking down at me for working in fast food or Starbucks or whatever. Anyways, and that's where kind of the, the premise for this script comes from is there's this guy. I, I, I picture Seth Rogen at the time. I think this is when um, Superbad had just come out. So it has some of that humor elements in it. Uh, maybe a little bit more inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> so I, I kind of pictured that kind of tone, that Judd Apatow tone to it. A little bit of Guy Ritchie mixed in there as far as some of the characters. And anyways, he wants to go get a degree. So he figures if I get a, I have no money, he's broke, right? So he figures if I get arrested and go to prison, then I'll get a free education and I'll get out and I'll be good to go. So <clears throat> this would be the Bentley read. I will do just a few pages and then we'll go on to a different subject of um, Pan Ed. Now, <laughs> when I wrote this, I, 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 I take things seriously. So I, I legitimately went and I learned how to do all the uh, specific camera angles, like, and all the words, like, see you is close up. Um, there's more on here. Camera dolly, so a dolly is when it's moving on tracks backwards. All right, let's do this. Interior bedroom, fade in, fade from black. Camera holds on a man lying in bed. He is laying on his side, eyes open as his alarm clock rings. Close up on alarm clock, the time reads 11.30 a.m. Hen enters from off screen and hits snooze. Hard. Credit sequence, music playing. As credits are displayed, we cut to hotel banquet room. There's a man talking on stage, 20 people sitting and listening. The man is using a PowerPoint to display big words like positive affirmation and dream big. Next scene, exterior apartment. Man enters front door of rundown fourplex. Man is Bobby Ayler. Young man, mid-twenties. Average looking. Slender build. Camera door is backwards as Bobby walks forward. As we move back, a FEMA trailer comes into view on the lawn of the fourplex. It's very clear it doesn't belong here. Bobby stops. A man is standing near the trailer's door. Bobby Ayler. Hey, John. The man is John Weaver. He's about 55 years old, very tall and skinny. Looks like an old English soccer fan. He also talks with a very thick English accent. John Weber. It's bad. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I did a bunch of research and I got one of those online forms that shows you how to like convert into slang, English slang. So I just loaded this up with English slang and I don't know if it makes any sense. It's brass monkeys out. Yeah. Where are you to? Bobby doesn't understand what John is talking about. He only reports, sorry, he only responds so we can understand. This is normal. Bobby Ayler. Oh, I'm just headed to work. What about you, John? Core blimey, thinking about having a car boot sale. This is core blimey, thinking boot, having a car boot sale. Bobby scratches his head. Bobby, was that like a garage sale? John looks puzzled. John, oh no, mate, a garage sale ain't gonna pay for a benda. Oi, why are you looking so gip? Which I mean, I think it means depressed. Bobby, I'm all right. Just the same old stuff. I wasted 25 bucks going to a motivational speaker last night. John, was he a real wazak? So everything John says is, is uh, things that I don't think make any sense. And if you're watching this and you are from the UK, hopefully it's not. Hopefully it does make sense in the context. Bobby adjusts his footing as if to, to, as if to prepare for a long conversation. Bobby, well, I don't know what a Wazak is, but it sounds bad, which is an accurate way to describe the entire event. John, what are you doing there in the first place? Bobby, I don't know. I've just been feeling kind of glum lately. I just turned 25. That kind of made me start thinking about my future and stuff. John. Future, what more would, what more could you want, friend? Bobby, I don't know. Since all my friends are graduating college, getting jobs, houses, I just feel I missed the boat. John, believe me, friend, I've been on many boats. They're worth missing. Bobby once again ignores John's comments. Anyways, I thought I'd check out a, motiva a motivational speaker. Make me feel better about things. I don't know. Maybe make me feel better about things. I don't know. John, well, the well then, let me have it. Bobby, well, I've always kind of hated motivational speakers. I don't know why. They just make me feel angry. I checked it out, paid my fee, put on my name tag, then sat. I sat there while he talked about nothing for an hour. He literally talks about talking. It was terrible. Then it gets worse. Close up on John. What? Bobby, sounds like nothing, but it says a lot. John, well, come on now. Don't stop and take a piss in me pocket. <laughs> Bobby, well, next thing, exterior hotel parking lot. Daytime. Steady cam follows Bobby walking up the hotel lobby into the parking lot. Bobby walks up to his car and unlocks the door. Before he gets in, he notices the motivational speaker walking through the parking lot. 
Can't see his car, car not in view. From Poppy's point of view, we see the speaker walk towards the end of the parking lot. He is very good looking, fake tan, slick back hair, flashy suit. Next scene, close up of Poppy's face, giving a sinking expression. Medium shot of the speaker opening the trunk of a 1987 Dodge Lancer, very beat up and rusty. Back to the scene, exterior apartment with John and um, Bobby. Medium frame on John. Why? I don't follow. Bobby. He got into a $500 car. It's basically his a and a &E biography. Only a story doesn't take an hour to watch. Only a glimpse of his shitbox car. John. I would be forever in the good Lord's debt to captain the vessel of her standing. <laughs> Bobby. Anyway, it says a lot about his bullshit success stories. John. Um, I tried to be a motivational speaker once. I threw a quit bobbler and I got shot down. I don't know if that makes sense. Bobby, by who? The National Bullshitters Association? They both laugh briefly. Full frame, John walks towards Bobby, takes a step a foot away. I'm having a laugh at you, you wafta. Bobby slides, turns backwards, looks intimidated. Bobby nervously, me, what do you mean? John, you need to have a government accreditation to be a... Uh... John, you need to have a government accreditation accreditation to get a license, my friend. Those lads have business degrees. Bobby, great. You just prove we're both losers. So basically, um, he's, just, he's again finding out that he has no business degree. And even though that motivational speaker and that shitty old car was full of shit, he's accredited to be able to speak that. And again, making Bobby feel like bad for not having a degree. So that's the first scene. Uh, it gets pretty, it gets pretty crazy. Chris Poulet is in this sort of character for him. Spell his name Poulet, and look at that. It says, "You son of a bitch." Fifteen years before we captioned that, or we trademarked Y S O B, we were using it. Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed that, and you want to see more? Comment below. Um, I have no problem every night reading a few scenes from this if you guys actually enjoy it. Um, it's hard when you write something because in your head it makes sense, but. That's because you wrote it. So you fill in the blanks of the missing pieces that someone else might not see. So yeah, that's scene one of uh, Pen Ed. That was only five pages. And there is only 43. Actually, I didn't write that much at all. Fuck, I was lazy back then. I was reading more. I haven't read through this in over 10 years. And there's lots of really funny little scenes. It's all things that actually happened in my life and based on people I've met. And I think most writers, it comes down to that, like people they met, build characters. I know Guy Ritchie, I've watched interviews and most of the characters in his movies are people he grew up around in England. There's one character, he's a lawyer. And uh, this is not about a person. This is just, I made this up, but uh, I had this funny idea where he uh, goes with his buddies and he always orders drinks for everybody, but he always orders a muff diver. You know, like for a birthday, fill it full of whipped cream, put a shot in the bottom, but he orders it like it's a normal drink. So like he sits down with his friends, like, all right, get some muff divers. And people are like, oh, okay, cool. It's kind of funny. Yeah, I'll do the muff diver. Like, That's weird. They get it around. We're like, Bobby, like, or his name is Jeremy. Jeremy, that's not a real drink. He's like, what are we talking about? It's a real drink. It's a muff diver. It's on the menu. Like, no, it's a, a gag thing. This character only drinks muff divers. <laughs> All right, well, it's back to the grind tomorrow. We have a lot of things to get done with some sponsors and we have projects being wrapped up. Um, the GT3RS is now registered and insured. Takes a little bit of time. Has to get shipped to Alberta, inspected, shipped back. And then they played it and all that. And then we have special insurance for production use. And Damon and I, we've talked about this a thousand times. We don't screw around in this business. Like we follow all the rules. We have the proper insurance. We don't play games. It's very expensive, but that's the cost of doing business. So. The, the three RS is done. I'd love to um, hopefully drive it home this week and bring it to the island for a few days on the weekend and start getting some miles on that thing, get to know it better. So I'll drive that back. Uh, the, the squad are staying at his house for now, at Damon's house. Um, the RS, we have got the uh, the Salt Air um, uprights and the GT2 RS style carbon end plates for the wing. Uh, we've got the exhaust half done. So the JCR center pipe, obviously you guys saw that video. If you haven't, go back and watch it. And then the rest of it's being built this week. So hopefully end of week will be done. The internal headers and the corner pipes. And that car is going to be crazy. And then I want to get a few more things for that car. I'm not sure. Um, we're going to do a tune for sure. We haven't figured out who's going to tune it. Probably VF. I talked to VF earlier. Apparently you can get flames out of that car. So that'd be pretty cool to get that tuned. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to need more projects. I mean, 720 GTR is almost done, so we'll wrap that up. 48 is going into the knife, so that's a whole new one. Um, what else we got going on? Quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, being stuck in Canada for 15 months now, we really want to get driving again and go and see everybody down in the U.S. and 
I'm feeling it more and more and more as this gets longer and longer and longer and longer. But today I registered for my vaccine. So hopefully we get vaccinated and then Damon and I are both covered that way. So we're healthy and then we can get all of our stuff dialed in and come down and see you guys in the US and hopefully international. I did mention that yesterday in the video that uh, we both are really in, in, uh, inching, aching. We just want to come back and see you guys. We want to come all over the world. We want to go to the Philippines. We want to go to the UK. We want to go to Australia, um, Iceland, wherever. I mean, let's let's go. Let's go have some fun. Let's ship some cars around. And believe it or not, you know, yeah, we lease some of our cars, but a lot of the cars we've been paying cash for just based on tax reasons. And when it's paid out in cash, you can ship it anywhere. So if it's a leased car, sometimes you can't send it to certain countries like Dubai, for example, and I think some other places in the UK. But we can take some of the cars that are owned out, right? And we can ship them off. And then maybe we could ship a few cars to like, you know, one country to the other. We've got a lot of cars right now. We need to utilize them. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go and uh, get my house cleaned up and get organized. And then tomorrow morning, back on the grind, Monday. I used to hate Mondays. Uh, when I was a district manager at Starbucks, I hated it. We started every Monday morning with a conference call where people said shit that made no sense. But in the corporate world, that's what you do. You say, oh, yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And everybody's doing this, blah, 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 blah. And then the, the ass kissers are like, I echo what you said. I'm going to echo that. Um, that was like this. Anyways, I, I, I enjoy the grind. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. And it's a hustle. And working for yourself is super rewarding. And you can only blame yourself if things don't work out. But you can thank yourself when things do work out because you're doing the work. Whereas in a big company that can get lost, especially if you're creative like I am. I mean, I wrote this screenplay while the district manager in a very serious position where there was no joking around. I was firing people. I was opening new stores. I was running a multi-million dollar business and not being myself. So every day I wore this, this uh, ironically, a mask. <laughs> I wore this mask that wasn't me. or It's called a hat. I mean, it's less more appropriate. Or this hat, the DM hat. Every day I put that hat on, it wasn't who I was. And people would look at me and be scared of me. Like a lot of the, the baristas were like, oh, Dave's here, this is scary. That was the role I had to play, but it wasn't who I was. And the farther you are away from who you are and pretend to be, it's that's what burnout happens. And I burnt out really hard towards the end. It's like what I wanted to do, who I was. And towards the end of my career at Starbucks, I was working with Damon and working for DDE and starting to get that going for like the last, I think, year. So I would do both. Because the uh, DD wasn't in a spot to pay me a salary I needed to live. And I've got kids and a mortgage and things like that. So I can't just go and work for nothing. It's actually your advantage when you're in your 20s and you're single. Because you can work for nothing. There's nothing stopping you. So anyways, I uh, hit major burnout. And then things worked out really, 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 really well. But it was like a huge leap of faith leaving a safe job. And everybody, like my family, my friends, almost everybody in my life. Except for a few key people. And you, you know who you are. That was a bad idea. Like you're gonna leave your corporate six figure safe job with health benefits and vacation. You know what you're supposed to do. So we make YouTube videos with Damon. And uh, I was like, yeah. But the cool part is, and I think I've said this before to you guys, I never had any doubt. It's a good feeling, especially when you're you're all in. Like, okay, let's do this. I grenaded my career at Starbucks, I left. There's no going back now. And I went all in and just trusted the process and we worked together and we did some cool stuff. Let's turn it off here. And um, here we are today. And we're just getting started. Motherfucker, it is comfortable back here. Can I recline this right now with it being off? Oh, I can. Hold on. We're not over yet, you guys. Fully reclined. You can see the controls right here. Have I shown you guys this before? Uh, don't mind the mess. I, this is my... My kids are in here and there's you know, fruit snacks, but can you see this okay? So there's the uh, massage, this button here I press. Now I can control that seat. He's moving now. All the way forward, look at that leg room. So then I press that again, now I control my seat. This is the HVAC system, um, heated and cooled seats, obviously the fan. It's funny, I had, um, when it was really hot last week, I had the AC in the back cranked for my kids and then I uh, went back to work, left the car, didn't change it. And then this week when I came back from Damon's house, I was driving this thing and I was like, why is the fan so noisy? Like, it sounds like the, um, the blower motor is working full time. So I turned the heat off up front, I turned everything off. It's like, and I was like, wait a second, it's the rear HVAC. So it has its own complete system, a uh, blower motor and everything for the back seats. So I reached back, turned it off and I turned off the heating noise. And then here's the champagne fridge. 
Do I have the key in my pocket? Stand by. Okay, I grabbed the key and I turned on the car so now I can use more features. Uh, I'm not sure if I've shown you guys some of this stuff, but I was sitting here telling stories and I was like, thinking to myself, God damn, I love this Bentley. And I never really get to enjoy the back seat, obviously as I'm driving. And this is a rate 98 car, which means only Damon and myself, as owners of the company, can drive it. It's an ICBC insurance policy. It's one of those stupid rural ones where it's super expensive and anyways, but no one else can drive this car, so I can't throw the keys to a buddy or my girlfriend and be like, drive me around. I have to drive or Damon has to drive. Okay, so I wanna show you guys a couple things that are really cool that I may have missed in the past. Um, this is a speaker right here. So I have a speaker here, speaker there, speaker there, speaker there. Sounds really good, but check this out. We got a sound. Uh, there's a the remote, but all this is leather. Like, every, everywhere's leather. This is stainless steel. Here's a remote. So if I press the screen button, it'll open the screen. Then I can turn some music up, which I can't play music because it's copyright. I can play composer, but I'm recording my phone right now, which means I can't play it. So you can just imagine composers playing right now. And you can control the whole thing here. You can control everything from the back seat, volume. This has got a Bentley logo on it. Imagine losing that without a cost to replace. Would not be kind. So close the screen, put that away. And there is the, the main event here. The champagne fridge. The flicker you see right now, that's just the, the refresh rate of the camera. You can see it happening, but it's not happening in front of me. So, I've got uh, some champagne flutes that actually do have the Bentley logo on the bottom. And that's that's crystal. One of those things where it's super cool. Will I ever use it? Probably not. I don't know if you're allowed to drive around with champagne in the back. Yeah, you are because they're not open. But if they're open, I don't think they can be back there. So it's kind of like a, it's like a bragging thing. But do you actually use it? I mean, my kids obviously aren't going to be cracking the champagne. Actually, that being said, I should back up for a second. My oldest Brooklyn will put chocolate milk and stuff in there. So we do little road trips. So I'll load it up, which is kind of cool. Um, it takes a while to get cold. And when you turn off the car, it turns off the fridge. So you got to kind of plan for it. Tables we've seen before. I've shown these ones at volume. And I think that's it. I think it's just one of those cars where it's like, when you really sit there and appreciate all the build quality, like everything is just so beautiful. Like the back of the door handles are hand burled. When you open the, when you open the door, the seat moves back again to where it was. You can see it's moving right now. Anyways. That's an impromptu little tour of the backseat of the Bentley Mulsan. Not Mulsane, it's the Mulsan. The name Mulsan came from Le Mans, the straight stretch. Bentley has a huge heritage in Le Mans, and that was uh, one of the throwbacks of this car. And unfortunately, this car is no more. They, they killed it in uh, 2020. It was the last year of the Mulsan, and now it's the Flying Spurs, or flagship car. The reason being is the market for these insanely long, expensive, over-the-top cars just couldn't meet the demands as far as what it costs to produce this car. At its height, they're making 500 a year, and then it dwindled to like 120, I think, in the last year. And you gotta think, like, this car, I've said this a thousand times, Canadian dollars, was a 465 new. And they, it's just, like, so much money, and I think the market that they started getting more towards was, um, well, I know this for a fact, the Bentega, the SUV, accounts for over half their sales. The Flying Spur, the Continental, the Coupe. So anyways, without going too far into this, uh, they said, okay, we'll, we'll kill off the Mulsan. We'll redesign the Flying Spur and make it more Mulsan-ish. So it's a lot more luxurious. It's a nicer, way nicer car than it was in the old one. And I actually showed you guys a little while ago when in August, it was so nice. The 2020 Flying Spur of the W12. So, you know, when that depreciates one day, like this car has, maybe I'll get into it. But in the meantime, I love the Mulsanne and I really enjoy driving this car and it's an absolute pleasure. <sighs> Signing out. I'll see you guys later. Time to crush a workout. I think I should try to go and get a haircut this week, like a proper one. I got like a trim last week, but we didn't take enough off, clearly. You guys coming? You guys make fun of me all morning. She's rough on me, guys. Hey, Dino. Like I said, I speak the truth. You speak the what? <laughs> I speak the truth. Speak the nothing. Stop laughing. Leave me alone. What'd you say? What'd you say about my? What'd you say about my shoes? I said these shoes are these are Ultra Boosts, and I said these are really cushiony in the heels.
because they have a lot of cushion because they're a running shoe. I was like, yeah, it's too bad you don't run. She thinks that's funny. <laughs> Wavy well, just got back from a grocery store run and this is kind of cool. I didn't even know this. I, I almost feel bad I didn't know. So there's this one uh, vineyard. This is not what I was shocked about, by the way. This one's really cool. It's just a cool bottle. Check this out. What a vibrant, cool looking. It's called the Vibrant Vine. It's local yeah. to Kelowna. So this is cool. Yeah. This is actually what was shocking to me. I did not know Wayne Gretzky owned a vineyard here. And this is their rosé. Yeah, it's a VQA. And that's really cool that it's <laughs> number 99, of course, Wayne Gretzky Okanagan, the Wayne Gretzky estate. That's really cool. It's got his signature on there. Smart. That's pretty cool. 99 at Ceylon Foods. <laughs> it's pretty neat. It's on sale. Yeah. He's a smart, uh, he was a smart person with the money he made from yeah. playing hockey. He invested into a lot of different businesses. I did not know though, one of them was a vineyard here. Yeah. Let's go check it out. That's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. The great one. Yeah. <laughs> well, Presley's digging in real good here. We have dinner made by wifey. Special salad. Yeah. What kind of salad is this? It's like a tortilla salad. salad? Sweet corn. You could put this in a taco. It looks good. We got some chicken. So I got my protein. Boy, if he's a vegetarian. I don't like drumsticks. You don't? I tried it. it <laughs> no, you're pretty vegetarian too, aren't you? Oh, why? Wow. Just had another drumstick added to my collection. Okay, oh, what's the this? The verdict is in the Wayne Gretzky. Rosé is delicious. Good? It's really good. Dino's got his I'm antler. I'm drinking a hot tub. You're drinking a hot tub? How's it a hot tub? Oh, because it's got bubbles in there? Presley loves carbonated water. She does. So San Pellegrino, Perrier. Because I heard it's made out of air. All right, guys. Bon appetit. As I say in French. <laughs> I got some meat. So Presley and I are juicing. Hey, show them how it's done today. We're gonna do apple, lemon, lime, some mint, and a little cinnamon at the end. Cinnamon in them. Okay, go. A lime, a little lime juice, a little lemon. Presley, give it a stir. Okay. It wasn't that messy. Was it what? It wasn't that messy. It wasn't too messy. You gotta try some. You gotta try some foam? The foam is usually bitter. Here. This one's actually good. Let me try. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, let's try. Hold on. We added a little bit of water to it. Give it a sip. How'd we do? Oh, it must be good. She's slamming it. Dino, she doesn't know how to share. Mine. <laughs> Here, let me have a sip. Let me try this. I was the one that made the recipe and you already had some. Mom, you have to try some. That's good. good. I was the one that made this recipe up. That's really good. Delicious. High five, juicer. We were gonna put some cinnamon in it, but let's try it with it. Well guys, this is the tail end of my night. I have to uh, get some sleep and go to bed. I've been uh, fiddling with the copyright claims on some of the main channel YouTube videos, which is just part of the business. It's a pain in the ass. I have a couple licenses to uh, websites like uh, Epidemic Sound and Artlist.io where you can essentially buy membership and have a license that allows you to use the music globally on social platforms like YouTube and uh, monetize your videos for commercial use. Um, anyhow, I talked to Aaron through text earlier and I was gonna give you guys a quick little update before I end my portion of the video. Uh, Aaron's been working on the tail end of 
the build on the F12. All the parts have been sent away to powder. Um, he sent me some photos before he sent the parts off. He's been working on the hood. The hood's really, you know, tough, really, really small tolerances between the turbos and the blow off valves and, and everything, everything that's under there, all the piping and stuff. So I'm going to show you guys some really cool images that Aaron texted me tonight. So here we go. I'll do a little voiceover. So as you can see, the first image here is some of the tolerances. He uses this um, thread or line to line up where the hood would rest. So he has to line everything up so that it fits well, under the hood because not everything is going to be, you know, exposed. But he has cut several holes. And in order to do that, he's mocked up also this render on the computer uh, to basically outline where the pipes will exit. And um, at the end of these images, I'm gonna show you guys actually the beginning stages of the cut holes in the hood. I'm really, really fired up about this. It looks really, really sick. Uh, the car looks really, really tough. And um, we're gonna basically finish this, repaint the hood at some point, but just to get things you know going and get the car started and all that, He's going to get all the parts under the hood sent off to powder and then full assembly and we're looking at probably about um a week ish before we'll be able to do a first start now fingers crossed the car starts and all goes well because then he's going to put it on a trailer and drive it out to california for tuning so super pumped i hope you guys enjoyed that little update from aaron kaufman and myself on the twin turbo f12 build you guys have a great night. I'm off to bed. Peace. I love you. Later.